Hey everyone, so we're moving right along here. We're gonna have a screencast now on the details of mitosis, so the various steps in uh, mitosis. Remember, mitosis is the portion of the mitotic phase that divides the DNA that we duplicated interphase. It's one of two portions of the mitotic phase. So mitosis splits uh, the DNA, it divides it into two separate cells. Cytokinesis is the portion uh, of the mitotic phase that will physically separate cytoplasm and physically separate the cell into two new cells. So mitosis is the part that divides the DNA equally into two new cells. We're going to cover what that looks like. Uh, if you look at this slide, basically this is the whole uh, portion of mitosis. We're not going to do it from this perspective because things are rather small, but I want to take you from interphase to so this part G2. We're going to go from G2 to prophase, from prophase to metaphase, metaphase to anaphase, anaphase to telophase, and cytokinesis. Remember these happen uh, simultaneously. At the very end of mitosis. Now you're going to get two new daughter cells at the end of this process and if this were to be a infinite loop one of those would go on now to enter into interphase and to grow and to duplicate organelles and to duplicate DNA. This other cell would also go into uh, interphase, it'd go into a different interphase though. So I want you to appreciate that, that this ultimately becomes two separate cells. Okay, let's get into the details. Interphase. An interphase, which is, uh, you know, the majority of the cell cycle, as we said before, organelles are duplicating, the cell is growing, DNA has been duplicated. So you can see in this uh, picture right here, the DNA is already duplicated. Okay, it is in the nucleus. It's very loose. Remember, because it's chromatin at this point, we've been calling this a chrom uh, chromatin chromosome, so they're very loosely coiled. It's like a big ball of yarn. At this point, late in interphase, you have two centrosomes. Remember, these are some of the organelles that have been duplicated in interphase, and this will be important for a reason uh, we'll see in a minute. Each centrosome is composed of two centrioles, okay, so each of these little uh, tube-shaped objects are a centriole, and there are two of them in each centrosome. So we have a total of four centrioles, two centrosomes. Now one of the first things you'll notice in prophase is that these centrosomes begin to, to migrate away from each other. So you see in this picture over here, they're together, the sort of northern pole of the cell. Now what you're going to have is one centrosome is going to migrate to the other end of the cell. So for simplicity, let's call this side the North Pole and this side the South Pole. One centrosome is going to migrate down to the south and orchestrate the collecting of uh, chromosomes from this end. This, chrom this uh, centrosome will stay at this end and orchestrate collection of chromosomes for the new cell from this end. Okay, So they become different poles. You can also see at this point that these little strands here, what we call spindles, are starting to form. So you have spindle formation, spindle fiber formation. That will be important uh, as we progress in mitosis, so you'll see that in a minute. Okay. So the first thing is centrosome migration uh, with spindle formation. This is something you see in this first uh, step of mitosis, this transition from interphase to, to, to prophase. Now, the second thing you see in prophase is uh, a change in this DNA. Remember, the DNA here is loose. It's, for, it's formed as chrom uh, chromatin chromosomes. But it changes in prophase. Remember, uh, DNA undergoes a lot of changes in the cell cycle. Now it's condensed, so these sister chromatids are now condensed. They're smaller, they're tinier, they're more compact. 
And we know that this, the reasoning behind this is that the chroma, chroma, uh, sister chromatids become compacted because it's easier to manipulate them. It's easier to move them around. So that's what we'll see uh, with these pairs of chromatids, these sister chromatids here, is that when they're condensed, we can move them around better. Lastly, um, let me write that down. DNA condensed. Lastly, number three, something that's obviously very important because it, if you can't get past this nuclear envelope, this surrounding of the nucleus, if you can't get into the nucleus to access the DNA, it's pointless. So what happens in prophase is you start to get fragmentation of the nucleus, so this thing starts to break down. You can see here that the nucleus is gone, so you get nuclear fragmentation. The nucleus starts to break down because you're going to need access those spindle fibers are going to need access to those sister chromatids to move them around. Okay, moving on, transitioning from prophase to metaphase. So from the first step to the second step, and it's a pretty obvious one. Once these spindle fibers, remember these spindles are, are the sort of strings emanating from the centrosome up here. See how the centrosome is here? It's going to start sending out various spindles Okay, and what these spindles are eventually going to do is they're going to make contact with pairs of sister chromatids. Now remember, there's a northern pole and a southern pole of these uh, of the cell, and there's a centrosome at each end that's sending these spindle fibers out. Okay, so the spindle fibers are going to make contact with the pairs of sister chromatids, and essentially they start to pull. Now if you pull on something say with two, two ropes, and you pull at equal forces, essentially there's going to be no movement. So it's going to line up right in the middle of the cell. And this is what we see. Uh, metaphase is characterized by sister chromatids lined up at metaphase plate. So this portion right here is called the metaphase plate. OK, so you see a line right along the middle of the cell, so, sort of like the equator. And all those sister chromatid pairs are lined up there. Uh, that's because they've had attachments from spindles coming from the centrosomes. Centrosome spindles are pulling equally, so the, that's putting the sister chromatids smack dab in the middle of that cell. Okay, transitioning from step two. Uh, oops. Fix that. Transitioning from step two in metaphase to step three in anaphase, this is also uh, very important. I, actually, all these steps are obviously very important. But when you have the sister chromatids lined up at the metaphase plate, essentially they're ready to go. Once they all are collected in the middle of that, that cell, it's, they're ready to be um, made back into chromosomes. Okay, So what happens is there's sort of a, a molecular scissor that comes through here and snips this pair right here snips this pair right here, snips this pair right here, and snips this pair right here. So there are enzymes that act as molecular scissors to kind of relieve this union between these two sisters. Okay, If you relieve that union, you basically cut ties between them, these spindles are going to retract and pull uh, this, what's now considered a chromosome now, this former sister chromatid, is going to be pulled back in this direction. So it's going to be pulled back to the northern part of the cell, and this, uh, these four new chromosomes are going to represent the genetic material that goes on to make this new daughter cell. Okay, so during anaphase, sister chromatids are, are uncoupled, and the, the new chromosomes start to migrate to the other end of the cell. Okay, transitioning from anaphase, it's number three, to telophase here. Essentially, at one point, these chromosomes are going to make uh, it all the way to this end, the northern pole. That's going to signal to the cell that we are done dividing our DNA. Essentially, mitosis is over. What telophase do does is it basically ends mitosis. Okay, It's going to basically uh, put the cell back to uh, what it was. Okay, So back to what it was when we started mitosis. So what does that mean? Well, that means that first 
you need to build a nucleus. You need to put a nuclear envelope back around your DNA. Right? It's very important that your DNA remain intact and away from enzymes. So you want to rebuild this nucleus. Done. The cell will do that. It'll put that nucleus back together. You also need to decondense your DNA. So in other words, you need to transition back to that ball of yarn. Uh, as we see before, that it's important that it's decondensed like a ball of yarn so that you can replicate it in S phase of interphase. So what you're seeing here is a return to the, the ball of yarn, essentially, of your DNA. Remember, it's going from being tightly wound, tightly compacted chromosomes back into not condensed chromosomes within the nucleus. That's the big thing. The other thing with anaphase is that you, you're probably noticing that this is a elongated shape. That elongated shape is going to give space to create these two new cells. Okay. Oops. All right. So essentially, that's what's happening. Um, that slide looks like it's. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. So we're building two new cells. Uh, cytokinesis, the second part of the mitotic phase, is going to come in. Basically, uh, half your cytoplasm goes here, the other half goes here. So it's fair and square. Uh, it's a fair share. Basically, you're going to break this once large cell now into two cells. So uh, cytokinesis basically physically divides at the division sign uh, the cell. Okay, You can actually see that happening here. It's starting to pinch off into uh, two complete cells. Now, these two new cells are called, called uh, daughter cells. So we've made two daughter cells. This is daughter one with her intact nucleus and, and full complement of DNA. This is daughter two with her intact nucleus and all of the DNA that she needs to become a new cell. This cell can then go on and go to uh, interphase, can go on to mitosis, and basically it's just a cycle it repeats. Right. So if this is a skin cell, it can constantly do this every uh, couple weeks when we shed skin cells you can get new skin cells by uh, by this process okay so I want to show you a few things now um, and this is stuff for you to work on okay so at this point in the screencast I want you to pause and kind of take these notes down and answer these questions be able to answer these questions fully for uh, a good score on this on this test that's coming up if you can't answer all these questions since you're not going to do as well as you want so pause them right now. See if you can answer these questions. See if you can draw prophase. What's happening in prophase? Why is it different than what the cell looks like in interphase? Okay, so go ahead and pause that and do that. And when I get to each slide, make sure you pause it and make sure you're able to answer each of these questions. Okay, so this is prophase. These are some of the metaphase questions. So go ahead and pause it and make sure you can answer these questions. Make sure you can draw this phase. Go ahead and pause it. Okay, this is for anaphase. Go ahead and pause it. Make sure you can answer these questions. Telophase, same with this. Make sure you're able to draw everything. Make sure you understand with telophase that it's followed immediately, if not simultaneously. Uh, so while tele telophase is happening, you're also getting cytokinesis. separation of cytoplasm physical division of cells so going from one cell to two cells okay I hope that helps there will also be a pen cast for this so make sure you stay tuned for that whichever one you like better uh, make sure you check that out I hope that helps see you later